There are many ways to find rough diamonds in nature. So in today's video, I'm going to show you the easiest way. And also all the telltale signs you should look for to track the presence of these gems in these regions. I'm sure you already know that diamonds are the most valuable gemstones in the world. What you may not know is where in nature diamonds are found. That's why it's important that you know exactly what these signs are and what geological formations to look for in these places before you start your search. I'll also show you how to identify rough diamonds because when it comes to finding precious gems in nature, it's not enough to know where to look if you don't know what a rough diamond looks like in nature. They are very different from the cut stones sold in jewelry stores or set in luxury rings. Imagine you're standing at the edge of a river with your feet in the water. You look down at the water and notice a small shiny stone on the riverbed being carried by the current. It's a diamond coming towards you. You are amazed and can hardly believe your eyes. Of course, this is a fictional story and you will never see a diamond being carried by the current. Because the first thing you'll notice when you find a diamond in nature is that it's much heavier than other common stones of the same size. Which means that even if the current is strong enough to carry it downstream, other lighter stones will surely be carried along, keeping the diamond hidden under the gravel of alluvial deposits. But does that mean you can find diamonds anywhere in a river? The answer is no. But there is a place in rivers where many gems can be found. Alluvial deposits are the most suitable places for this. These deposits take millions of years to form, so they can hide diamonds and other precious minerals such as gold and titanium. But that's basically how diamonds spread through nature. But if other lighter stones hide diamonds, how do you find diamonds in rivers? Well, first you have to identify the alluvial deposits in the river you're looking for, which are the clumps of gravel that form in rivers. It's in that gravel that you're going to be looking. And that's true for flowing rivers or old rivers that dried up thousands of years ago. And in the case of dry rivers, you'll notice a small pile of gravel and silt. All you have to do is dig a little to remove the gravel, get some water, and use the techniques I'm going to show you below. But let's say you're in a river with running water. What do you have to do to find beautiful diamonds like those found in underground mines that are hexagonal in shape with six sides just like these? Well, when it comes to looking for diamonds in rivers, don't expect to find a stone in perfect condition. Usually diamonds found in rivers have irregular shapes like these, unlike diamonds that are mined directly from kimberlites in mines. Usually diamonds found in rivers look like a semi-polished stone or have prominent edges. Although diamonds are the hardest minerals on Earth, they are also subject to wear and tear from friction and violent collisions with the other stones in the river. But then you might ask, how can I tell the difference between diamonds and other stones? The first characteristic you'll notice is the metallic luster. This characteristic is unique to diamonds. Just look at the difference in luster between a rough diamond and quartz. Can you see how different the luster of a diamond is? If you look closely, you'll see that a diamond's luster is so unique that it even looks like the stone is oily. In other words, when you look at a diamond, it looks like a polished piece of iron, not a stone. So if you can notice this difference in the luster of diamonds, you'll certainly be able to identify a suspicious stone. Now that you know about shape and sparkle, the third and most important tip when it comes to finding diamonds in nature is to learn how to identify the minerals that indicate the possibility of finding diamonds in your area. This is because not every stream is going to have diamonds. So the first thing you should do before starting your search is to see if any of these indicator minerals are present, garnet, chromite, and ilmenite. These three minerals are much more abundant than diamonds, but because they form under similar conditions to diamonds, they are used as indicators, so they deserve your attention. Garnet, for example, is a gemstone that is much more common and cheaper than diamonds. And the most common type we can find in rivers is pyrope garnet, which is reddish in color, sometimes a little dark, sometimes a little brown. It is usually found in round or cubic shapes with several sides, sometimes polished. Like diamonds, they are heavy minerals. Some can even be worth a lot of money once they're cut. But what is important here is that you recognize and find these stones. Another indicator is ilmenite, an oxide of iron and titanium. This mineral is black with a metallic sheen. It is trigonal in shape and can have a number of facets. 
It looks like a piece of iron, is very heavy, has a hardness of about six on the Moho scale, and is a strong indication that diamonds may be present at the site. In fact, some ilmenite can be mistaken at first glance for carbonized diamond itself, which is darker and is popularly called black diamond. But since it has a hardness of six, you can use a quartz crystal to test its hardness, remembering that quartz has a hardness of seven mohs. The next mineral is chromite, another type of iron oxide containing iron and chromium and other combinations of minerals. It has a dark metallic appearance with irregular formation and is more rustic than ilmenite. It is also very heavy, almost like pure iron ore, much heavier than other stones of similar size. It regularly resembles a piece of lead. Finding chromite in rivers is also a strong indication that there may be diamonds there, as well as sapphires and rubies. So there, you found these minerals. The fourth step is to get the diamonds out of the river. But how do you practically do that? Well, to get the diamonds out of the river, you're going to need some sieves like these. You can start with three of them, but if you want to use more, feel free, because it's usually in the smaller ones that you'll find the diamonds. And there are a few tricks you'll need to do with the screen. First, you'll need to move some river gravel around. Take a shovel and put some of the gravel into the sieve, then make circular movements, turning the sieve. Since the diamond is heavier than the other stones, it will end up at the bottom of the gravel, along with the garnets, ilmenites, chromites, and gold, if there is any in the river. Again, you can use a prospector's paddle to move the gravel, gradually throwing out the lighter material along with the water, leaving only the heavier minerals in the center, as shown in this map video by our friend Dan Hurd. Now, this is going to take a little practice, of course, but in a few minutes, you'll be able to familiarize yourself with the process. Finally, you're going to have to spread out all the gravel, all the heavier material, and look carefully because you're going to have to see the diamond with your eyes. So remember that metallic sheen we talked about at the beginning of the video. Diamonds do not have the same luster as quartz crystals, so don't be fooled by transparent stones. The diamond is more like a crystal with a metallic sheen. Its brilliance will attract attention from afar. Diamonds are very small, so don't be fooled into thinking you're finding big stones. And when I say big, I mean over a gram, which is pretty big for a diamond. Also, before you find your first diamond, remember that it can't always be a quality stone. There are diamonds that are darker in color, of lesser value, full of inclusions that are only industrial diamonds. But even if you find an industrial diamond, rejoice because you're on the right track and in the right place with real diamonds, and it's worth looking further. The only caveat is to remember that diamonds are not easy stones to find. Even the most experienced have a hard time finding one, but it's not impossible. Who knows when your lucky day will happen, right? That's why it's worth analyzing every stone you find, especially in rivers. Taking the test to learn how to identify the different characteristics of gemstones can increase your chances of finding something valuable. While some discoveries may seem like luck, knowledge and attention to detail are essential in distinguishing an ordinary stone from a precious one. To help you identify these stones, we have several full-length videos here on the channel about different types of gemstones, including diamonds. To give you an idea, this is a rough diamond. Look how irregular and disproportionate it is. And this is the same diamond after it has been cut. What do you think? It's quite different, isn't it? Well, of course, there are some more specific and characteristic diamond shapes. But if even after watching this video, you still have doubts, don't worry, I'm going to show you a home test you can do to find out if your stone is an authentic diamond for less than 50 cents. So sit down in a comfortable place, grab some popcorn and something to drink, because you're going to leave here today knowing a lot about diamonds. The first thing to remember is that every diamond to be found is already out there somewhere in nature, just waiting for the right moment to be found. So it's exactly in those places that we will start looking. Of course, diamonds are not easy to find. If they were, they wouldn't be such valuable stones, and to accomplish such a feat requires a bit of luck combined with minimal knowledge. So even if you're an unlucky person, I assure you that knowing how to identify a diamond greatly increases your chances if you're looking in the right place. And who wouldn't want to find a diamond in the wild, right? So the first of the three places to look for diamonds are kimberlite deposits, 
But what is kimberlite, and where can you find it? Kimberlite is a very old rock that was formed in the Earth's mantle and came to the surface through extremely powerful volcanic eruptions. At these depths, the pressure and temperature are so intense that carbon can crystallize to form diamonds. Because kimberlite and diamonds originate in the same region of the mantle, when kimberlite is ejected from the Earth's crust during an eruption, it often brings diamonds with it from the depths. After the eruption, as it cools, the kimberlite solidifies, encapsulating the diamonds inside. Therefore, every diamond in existence originated in one of these ancient kimberlite rocks. A kimberlite vein can be huge, the size of a mountain, and then spread over a wide area. A fragment of this rock resembles a dense, dark gray stone filled with various inclusions. Among these inclusions, olivines, small green crystals, are of particular interest because they are precious stones that, like diamonds, form deep in the earth and are brought to the surface with the kimberlite. It's important to note that not every kimberlite contains diamonds, but every diamond has come from a kimberlite at some point. Therefore, if you are looking for diamonds, the ability to identify kimberlites is essential. However, because these rocks are not unique in appearance, it is important to become familiar with several rough samples. Although not all kimberlite contains diamonds, it is always the original source of these precious gems. But if you find it difficult to recognize these diamond-bearing stones, the kimberlites, there is another promising place to look, the rivers. Just as not every kimberlite contains diamonds, not every river will be a fruitful place to look for these precious gems. However, rivers are the second best place to find diamonds, You'll need at least three sieves of different thicknesses, one fine, one medium, and one coarse, as well as a mallet, and of course, a good dose of patience. As I mentioned earlier, finding diamonds is not an easy task, even for experienced prospectors. The secret, besides patience, is knowing where to look. Diamonds found in rivers are heavy, smooth stones. If you make circular movements with a sieve or a paddle, the diamond tends to accumulate at the bottom in the center of the equipment. Unlike the vitreous luster of a piece of glass, the luster of a diamond resembles a metallic sheen, an important detail to remember. Before you find a diamond in a river, you will likely encounter evidence of its presence. Chromites and ilmenites, for example, are dark, dense stones rich in iron and titanium and can be signs that you're on the right track. In addition, garnets, small red stones that often appear in the form of small spheres, are another promising sign that a diamond may be nearby. So finding these heavy stones in a river is a strong sign that you are close to finding your first diamond, and continuing your search is a wise decision. Now, if you don't have access to kimberlite or a river, your next best option is to look in alluvial deposits. Alluvial deposits are ancient riverbeds that have accumulated a variety of gravels over thousands or even millions of years. These deposits are essentially similar to the gravel found at the bottom of rivers and can contain a variety of valuable minerals, including diamonds and even gold. When exploring an alluvial deposit, you'll need some water to get a better look at what you're discovering, but the basic rules for finding diamonds remain the same as in rivers. Also look for the presence of phlogopites, a type of magnesium-rich mica that appears as small golden or greenish blades scattered throughout the area. The presence of these micas is a strong indication that the area may contain diamonds. In summary, now that you know where to look for diamonds and what signs to look for, you're ready to start your search with more confidence and determination. Now I'm going to show you the main forms that diamonds can take in nature so that you don't run the risk of finding one and throwing it away without realizing that you're looking at a rough diamond. In the United States, the most common diamond shapes are irregular, but there are a few shapes that are easier to recognize and more reliable. The first is the octahedron, an eight-sided shape. This is the most common natural shape of rough diamonds and can be found in many parts of the world. The octahedron is the perfect crystallization of diamonds with two pyramids joined at the base, similar to the iconic Louvre pyramid, which when reflected in water forms an octahedron with four faces and a point at each end. Diamonds of this shape are common in regions of the United States such as Colorado and Arkansas. Another interesting shape that rough diamonds can take is the spherical. Round diamonds have an almost spherical shape, but with a completely irregular surface. Even though they don't have defined faces, these diamonds are highly prized as collector's items because they are quite rare. 
Diamonds in the shape of a dodecahedron are also worth mentioning. As its name suggests, this shape has 12 sides and is considered one of the most harmonious and representative of platonic solids. Plato associated the dodecahedron with the universe, and in fact it is made up of 12 pentagons and cannot be divided into other regular polyhedra. This shape can be flatter and sometimes rounded, with 12 to 24 faces, and is most commonly found in diamond quarries in Africa. Cubic diamonds are one of the most fascinating shapes. These diamonds look like perfect cubes and are usually found in colors such as yellow, red, green, orange, and brown, with a more opaque appearance. They are rare and also highly sought after as collectibles, with a shape reminiscent of a dice cube. There are also triangular diamonds. These diamonds have an almost perfect triangular shape with several smaller triangular areas texturing the surface. Although this shape is found in various parts of the world, it is less common compared to the others. Despite these more defined shapes, most rough diamonds found in nature have irregular shapes. However, there is a secret to recognizing the details of diamonds. Small triangles can be seen on the surface of a diamond, a typical indication of its natural origin. Diamonds are known for their hardness, but they can also break. When a diamond fractures, its surface is not smooth like a quartz crystal, but has an appearance similar to brushed steel with multiple striations in the same direction. In addition, diamonds are significantly heavier than other stones of similar size. Another important point is the luster of diamonds. Unlike glass or crystal, the luster of a diamond has a metallic aspect, and this characteristic is even more evident when the diamond is found in a river. Although friction with other stones can wear down its edges, the diamond, the hardest stone in existence, will still look polished with smoothed edges and an almost smooth surface. With this information, you'll be better prepared to identify a rough diamond and ensure that this rare gem doesn't go unnoticed in your search. In addition to understanding diamond shapes, it is important to be aware of a stone that often fools the less experienced, quartz crystals. When broken into irregular shapes, these crystals can have an intense luster that leads many people to mistake them for diamonds. However, as I mentioned earlier, the luster of a quartz crystal is similar to that of glass, while the luster of a diamond is similar to that of a piece of metal. It's important to remember that finding an extremely crystalline diamond is rare. These almost translucent diamonds are usually found at great depths. Most diamonds have a slight yellowish or grayish tint. However, if even after watching this video, you still have doubts about whether the stone you found is a diamond, here's a simple and inexpensive test you can do at home to dispel those doubts. All you need is a piece of sandpaper, which you can buy for less than 50 cents at any hardware or paint store. Look for the coarsest sandpaper you can find. These sandpapers, usually dark in color, almost black, are made of a material called carborundum, a type of industrial ruby with a hardness of nine on the Mohs scale, which can scratch almost any stone except diamonds, which have a hardness of 10. To perform the test, take the suspect stone and rub it against the sandpaper. Be patient and remain calm throughout the process. If your stone is indeed a diamond, it won't be damaged. You can rub the stone hard and even pour some water on the sandpaper to make the process easier. At the end, if you find that the sandpaper is worn away but the stone remains intact, congratulations! You've just confirmed that you found a real diamond in the wild. On the other hand, if you see a white powder when you rub the stone against the sandpaper and notice that the surface of the stone has been worn away, this indicates that the stone is not a diamond because it has been scratched, which means that its hardness is below 9 on the Mohs scale. With this simple test, you'll be able to determine with greater certainty whether the stone you found is a diamond or just a shiny quartz. So if you're interested in taking up this therapeutic hobby that connects you with nature and has the potential to become a new source of income, I encourage you to get started right away. Who knows, maybe you'll discover a new deposit of some rare mineral out there. Here on the channel, we have several full-length videos on different types of gemstones other than diamonds, such as rubies and sapphires, to help you identify the stones you find on your adventures. But if you'd rather have all this knowledge in one place, go to the first link in the description of this video and support our project by purchasing the ebook Gemology for Beginners. Inside, you'll find a complete mineral dictionary where you'll learn the unique characteristics of all the world's precious and semi-precious gemstones. Now there's a lot more to say about diamonds than can be covered in one video. 
So watch the video that's now appearing on your screen to learn all the at-home tests you can do to determine if your stone is a real diamond. Thanks for your like and your subscription. Until next time, Gem Hunter.